Chapter 2 Their jump ship wasn't small, but it wasn't large either. The vessel had eight crew stasis pods, seven acceleration couches, a cockpit for a single pilot, a small rec room that fit three people, if they didn't mind sitting on top of one another, a galley that comfortably fit four, and an observation deck. The majority of the ship's actual space was reserved for the equipment bay. EETs travel with a minimum of four 4x4x8-meter quartermaster QM containers. After opening the airlock between the ship's interior and the cargo bay, Zilf headed for the stand of lockers embedded in the bulkhead next to the containers. After pressing his hand against his, the lock clicked and the door slid aside. Born of routine, he unzipped what he thought of as his street clothes and stepped out of the jumpsuit, the cargo bay's frigid temperature making his naked skin ripple with goose flesh and his balls shrink to walnuts. Teeth chattering, he reached in and pulled out his EET inner suit from the locker. He walked to the solid fabric-covered bench and sat down, his ass immediately thanking him for the warmth. As quickly as he could, he shoved his feet into the jumpsuit, made sure they were completely fitted to the inner suit's booties, and zipped it closed while standing up. Li Zhao, already naked, sat next to him while she did the same. You'd think that Wilkes could warm this place up a little before we get in here. Sylph smiled, but didn't look at her. Modesty wasn't something easily afforded on missions, but he still felt embarrassed during loadout load-ins. It wasn't so much from people seeing his kit, but more from seeing theirs. In some ways, he was afraid he'd stare at Li Zhao's small, perfect breasts, or Reki's large ones. It wasn't polite, and more importantly, he was afraid he'd sprout wood. He shoved his hands into the suit's arms and fitted himself in until his fingers found the form-fitting gloves. He flexed the fingers on his left hand. Perfect. He repeated the process with his right, and once sure he was ready, zipped the jumpsuit up all the way. The smart fabric bonded in an instant, snug but comfortable. Suited up, he tossed his traveling clothes into the locker. As he always did, he stared at the star and crescent painting his father had made. The symbol hovered over Mecca like a holy seal from Allah himself. Zilf took a deep breath and touched it lovingly. Waled he whispered to the painting, closed his eyes, and bowed. A moment later, Zilf shut the locker door, turned, and headed to the first container. The words, Reki's Wreckers, Suits, glowed with luminescent paint on the container's door. The logo of a 20th century CE wrecking ball smashing into a nuclear cooling tower from the same era blazed beneath it. Zilf touched his hand to the control panel, and the massive door opened and slid into its slot. Bright overheads came to life, bathing the container's interior, light dancing off coppery metal. Hello, babies, Zilf said with a grin. Seven suit cylinders lined the port wall. Zilf walked to the control console, a wide industrial panel whose chipped surface and screen had had more than one replacement, and pressed a finger to the power icon. The monitor stuttered to life with the Shinsho logo glaring at him like an angry boss. Zilf stifled a yawn as he flipped through menus. The yawn returned, and this time he let it rip. The sound echoed in the container before rattling out into the cavernous hold beyond. Blushing a little, he brought up the loadout screen. He and Yuri were the team's two largest members, although Reki was a close third. As such, and by training, they wore the standard EET heavy model. There was little point in changing the default loadouts for the heavies. Whatever was going on down there, it didn't sound as though they'd need the extra shielding or pressure systems required for high gravity or highly radioactive environments. Still, there was water, and if they were hundreds of meters below its surface, pressure would get high in a hurry. He muttered to himself for a moment. The heavy, as its name implied, was capable of lifting and carrying enormous amounts of mass, all while equipped with construction and combat tools. He had more than 2,000 combinations at his disposal just for that type of suit, but every option he selected added more mass to the suit until it reached the red line. At that point, the driver would be useless. He chewed his lip for another moment before ignoring the extreme pressure package and switching it to the standard pressure package. The next menu brought up the large array of tool choices. He quickly tagged the defaults, giving Yuri a plasma torch, the standard wrench tool, an energy generator, rescue supplies, and an aquatics package. After assigning the suit to Yuri and confirming his decision, he pressed next. Zilf chose the high-pressure package for himself, groaning inwardly about what Reki would say and how much shit Yuri would give him. 
Compared to the rest of the team, he'd be much slower and his flexibility limited. But if they needed someone to venture out in the deep water to fix their jury rig, Zilf would be the obvious choice. Apart from the pressure package, his loadout was identical to Yuri's. Griggs got the standard EWT package that included light plasma tools, which doubled as weapons, as well as low-impact explosives and, of course, a wrench. Zulf looked at the mass readings, decided Griggs could take an extra rescue pack, added aquatics, and called it good. If Griggs wanted to complain about the extra mass, Zilf would just mute him. Li Zhao, their medic, got the standard EMT loadout. Light on engineering tools, the EMT had an array of medical tools built into the suit, and slots for extra O2 scrubbers, emergency personnel bubbles, or EPB, and plasma cubes. Apart from the wrench, she'd have a plasma pistol for protection. The weapon might not be as terrifying as a plasma torch set to blast mode, or a plasma lance pulsing like a rifle, but Li Zhao had more than once proven she was a dead shot. Last but not least, Reki. While she was a top-notch engineer, Yuri and Zilf were specialized in the construction and repair business. Reki specialized more in the destruction and repel sort of engineering. The plasma cannon contained inside the suit's overly thick forearm could vaporize heavy rock, blast through thick plate metal, or create a hole for EETs trying to GTFO. Or get the fuck out. While he fitted her up with the standard supplies, he also added another medical package along with an atmosphere generator. She'd be nearly as massive as his suit, but they might need the air in addition to the energy. He hit confirm and waited while the console sent the loadouts to Reki. A moment later, his wristband buzzed. She'd approved the loadouts. Good. No complaints now. The boss had spoken. I'm freezing, Li Zhao muttered. Zilf looked over at her with a shrug. Your suit cylinder is ready if you want to get warmed up. She glanced at cylinder three. Her name faded into existence across the machine's display, held for a few seconds, and faded away before repeating. With a sigh, she said, I'll wait for the boss. Zilf rolled his eyes. You just like seeing her in a skin suit. Li Zhao blushed. That's not true. She paused a moment. But even if it were, it's none of your damn business. The woman held her face taut with indignation, but only managed to hold it for a moment. The pair broke out laughing. Get in the damned suit, Zilf said. She walked past him, still chuckling to herself. He watched her step inside the cylinder. The panel slid down and she disappeared from view. The cylinder hummed loudly for a moment before settling in. The muted clatter of metal fitting together filled the container while Zilf monitored the printing process. Another 60 seconds or so, and she'd be ready for inspection. The tool came to life and his wristband vibrated. He was connected, and after briefly checking the suit for any obvious physical damage, Zilf activated the diagnostic routines. The onboard systems pinged back, rows of green check marks appearing next to each. Considering how much time he spent maintaining the suit designs and the cylinders, and occasionally adding his own upgrades to both, some that had even been incorporated by Shen Shou into their base models. Zilf knew every centimeter of every one of his team's suits when they were fitted. He knew their optimum height, their ideal mass per payload, their balance ratios to compensate for the imperfect human form. One human leg was almost always slightly longer than the other, and even the oxygen-nitrogen combinations that had been optimized for each individual team member's metabolism. He even knew how often his teammates shit or piss themselves during long stretches of EET operations. Good thing the suits took care of that. Along with hydration and nourishment, the EET suit made it possible for engineers to work 24-7 until they burned themselves out and had to have a rest. Or the suit failed. For an EET, suit failure was the greatest risk, apart from reactor meltdowns, crushing gravity, and, when underwater at extreme atmospheric pressure, Seal failures, which would result in the suit squashing down to the size of a tin can. Reki's Wreckers, the EET Zilf had been with since finishing a three-year stint at the Shenzhou Training Academy, had only had two aquatic missions, both in less than 500 meters of liquid. Being underwater again had been a thrill, but in neither case had there been any fauna or flora. Not that he would have had time to investigate them if they'd existed. Shinsho and its competitors were forbidden from building facilities on worlds with any kind of life. That in itself wasn't usually a problem. Very few worlds or moons had atmospheres hospitable to known biology. 
Even the sulfur in H2S eating bacteria couldn't survive near or on a gas giant, much less a celestial body like Pluto, where the temperature hovered around negative 223 degrees Celsius. Apart from a few exceptions, the universe appeared to be a pretty damned hostile place for any kind of life, terraformed planets and moons notwithstanding. If an EET had been called in because of the locals, tools doubled as weapons, only their functionality changed. The sole exception was Li Zhao's plasma pistol. That was made for a single purpose. Protect the team from dangerous patients or to incapacitate those that needed incapacitating. The diagnostic finished and displayed a row of green check marks. He raised a thumb to her and Li Zhao headed out of the container, presumably for the triage unit. Yuri wandered in and headed for his cylinder without a word. He loosed a yawn while he stepped inside and the cylinder closed. Zilf watched the display, comparing each item to the planned manifest, just to make sure. Being overly cautious again, Reki said from behind him. Zilf flinched, but kept his eyes on the report. Surprised? She moved beside him. He finished the first inspection and paused the program. He swiveled to look her in the face, already having a good idea of what she would say. The corner of the left side of her mouth twitched upward. A clear sign. Why the pressure package? she asked. He grinned. Because we're in a lot of water and if something needs to get fixed, someone needs to go out there. Recky's lips twitched again. Good call, she said. Just wanted to make sure you didn't know something I didn't. No, boss, he said. Nothing like that. She nodded and the ghost of a smile touched her face. I like the loadout, Zilf. Just had to ask. Why do you think I'm smiling, Zilf said. Recky punched him lightly on the shoulder and clapped her hands hard. Let's move it, Griggs. Get suited up and we'll finish cargo inspection. And I can get into my own suit, Zilf shivered. The cargo container's temperature seemed to have dropped. Balls are the size of peanuts. Recky smirked but said nothing before heading to her cylinder. Make sure I look pretty, Griggs said as he walked by to his. Zilf rolled his eyes. Copper and orange, just like the rest of us. Griggs made a gagging sound as he stepped inside. Zilf went back to his work, catching up on the statuses of each suit. By the time Yuri stepped out of his cylinder, he'd already run the preliminaries on Griggs. Diagnostics. Another awkward pause as both Operator and Zilf waited to be told they needed to reprint, followed by the palpable sigh of relief when the suit passed both visual and diagnostic inspection. Repetition. Yuri clunked out of the container to check the engineering container, in Zilf's version of Li Zhao's triage. Reki passed and quickly left. Griggs departed his cylinder and clomped as heavily as he could on the container's deck. Zilf sighed. What's the problem now? Griggs shook his head. The servo sounds nearly inaudible. Feet. Just don't feel right. Zilf nodded. Feet. It's the aquatics package, Griggs. Requires adding a bit more mass to the boot. Hmm, Griggs said, stomping his feet again. Been too long, I guess. Tell you what, Zilf said. Give it a chance while we finish inspection. If it's still wrong, I'll take a look and see what it will take for a reprint. He might sound calm, but inside he was boiling. Zilf liked Griggs when they weren't either suiting up for a mission or a post-op briefing. When suiting up, he always managed to find something to complain about. During post-op briefings, he needled everyone about the tiniest missed detail. Half the time, Zilf made sure he was as flawless as he could be, just to keep Griggs' mouth shut when it was all over. Yeah, Griggs finally said with a nod of his head. We gotta get moving. Maybe sick people down there. He grinned through the visor before stepping out. Zilf waited for the man to clomp twenty steps away before grinding his teeth and cursing. Cheeks still ruddy with annoyance, he walked to his own cylinder and started it up. The helmet assembled across his face in layers of electronics and armor. The printer heads continued worrying around his body, form-fitting to his profile and preferences. The broken leg he'd had as a child had left him with a permanent weak spot. His program knew this and compensated by adding more armor in that area. He kept his eyes closed as the printers continued doing their job. Their staticky hum brought him back to his ocean, gliding through the deep purple above one of the artificial reefs that had become a true reef over the last century or two. Brilliantly colored thin fish analogs picked over the pictures, the places where most of their prey liked to feed. 
Their poisons were renowned for killing a human in minutes, making them the least liked fish for tourists. The most liked fish by the locals. The chances of them attacking a human were incredibly low, although it had happened every year or two, mostly to tourists or unfortunates that had a soup failure while floating over the manufactured biome. Besides their beauty, they loved to nibble on human bare feet, effectively eliminating any harmful bacteria or fungus. They were tasty, too, but heavily regulated. A chime sounded, and he opened his eyes. The suit's HUD glowed in front of him, the display superimposed over that of the container shield. His eyes flicked through each of the menu headings, rechecking his mental manifest against the displayed loadout. Perfect. Arming, the cylinder's display told him. Weapons and tools weren't fabricated permission. They were reused. A collar fit around his suit's neck, locked into place, and he felt the supply pack's pressure. It was barely noticeable, but after enough suit fittings, you could tell. His back vibrated as the cylinder fit another collar around his left arm, this one incredibly thick and oversized. He could disconnect the collar in seconds if it got in the way of the mission, but it was easier to keep it connected rather than carrying it. The display's words faded out and a new one appeared. Supplying. Several tubes appeared in his peripheral vision, and another wave of vibrations ran up and down his body. Artificial breathable atmosphere converters, a tank of immersion life support, and a range of special attachments for his left hand. The collar closed over the exposed arm with a loud click. Another diagnostic screen. Servos whined as the system tested all its connections and power systems. The cylinder display changed to, all done. The Wrecker's logo appeared on the screen before the machine opened. He stepped out, making sure the boots felt secure. Nothing abnormal there. Griggs was, as usual, bitching for no reason. He clomped his way to the console, grabbed the diagnostic tool, and scanned his suit. No issues. He was good to go. But there was procedure. Hey, Li Zhao, double-check my suit? She sounded awake now. Be there in a sec. Zilf, Yuri called over the comps. Get over here. You'll know in a second if something is out of place. Yeah, yeah, Zilf said. Li Zhao's about to run the diagnostic. Be there in a few minutes. Yuri harumphed, sounding both annoyed and amused. But by then, I'll have finished the checking. Zilf rolled his eyes. Wasn't that the idea? The large man made a sound over the comms that might have been a raspberry before his signal disappeared. Zilf couldn't help but grin. Pre-op nerves. Yuri riding him, Griggs being an asshole, Li Zhao becoming manic. And Reki? Reki was probably grinning while that sharpened tooth flashed its dangerous tip. It took only a moment for her to finish checking his suit. All five suits had passed printing and fitting. They always had, with the exception of his first stop. That had been the result of the ship maintenance job his predecessor had done. Probably why he died on a high-G planetoid with shattered armor. That incident notwithstanding, Sylph's cylinders were the best they could be. Reki requested him two years ago while he was finishing up at the Academy for that very reason. The best maintenance kept a team alive. As Li Zhao departed the container, Zilf closed up the suit's container and put it in lockdown. He wrapped the door lovingly with his armored fist, enjoying the boom it made. See you downstairs, he said, and headed to the container marked engineering. Yuri stood in front of its open door, a shit-eating grin easily visible through his visor. His eyes flicked to and fro for a moment, and a report appeared on Zilf's screen. There's the manifest, and I checked everything. Looks to me like we're good to go. Zilf quickly ran down the list, rapidly flicking his eyes to the equipment strapped to the container's walls and mentally ticking off each item. A wide cylinder sat at the back along with a number of pipes and vents. Raw printer material and solvents took up the container's entire port side. The general QM container had more of the stuff, ensuring an EET could do nearly everything but create a nuclear reactor. That required another container altogether. On Handley 5, he'd had to print a column support while Yuri held the wobbling structure with nothing but his powered, armored hands. It had taken a nerve-wracking two minutes. Zulf glaring at the display with sweat dripping down his face while he listened to Yuri's grunts through the comms. The Russian had been counting aloud, marking off each second Zulf had been away from his side. Luckily, on Handley 5, they'd been able to place their mini-manufacturing container practically atop the reactor's collapsing foundation. That had made printing and placing relatively easy. 
Also, luckily, the printer hadn't failed. Not luck, he thought. That's on you. He smiled again at the container before nodding to Yuri. Lock it up. Chiefs, Reki called out. Give me greens. Suits ready, Sylph called out. Yuri waited the beat before saying, Engineering ready. Medical ready, Li Zhao said next. When Griggs answered, the listless boredom and annoying diva tinge to his voice had departed. QM ready. Excellent, Reki said and walked from the rear of the QM container. Already I. Already I, the four team members said. She clapped her oversized armored hands. Then let's pack them in. 